Steerite! Let's wrap up the week with another ump show segment if you like this segment we did one this week after taking a little bit of a hiatus everyone was behaving themselves for about a week and change and then we had that interference call with miggy Rowe over at third base in the phillies dodgers game but there were some other candidates this week so let's start with atlanta they had that fun broadcast with smoltz and glavin and frenchy and you know whoever else has played for the braves in the last 20 years all on one broadcast and they were like, oh, Brian Snickers back to get thrown out of this game before he even started barking, just based on some bad calls. So let's start there. I think we can actually uh, show the clip and then we can do some listening as well. Wow. And he gives him that pitch. The one Good before that. Night. Chip, do you see the one? Yeah, I know you're throwing it. Yes, yeah, you can see Snip. Well, that before that was even ridiculous. lower. Ridiculous. You're seeing he's getting his money's worth. Yep, I yeah. knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I was just fixing to say, you're about to see Snick get thrown out of this game. It was some bad he calls. You know, he, he, he should have got thrown out. But you know what was funny, AJ? I, I remember being young and playing against Chipper Jones and playing center field. And I would watch from center field balls be thrown right down the middle and it'd be like, ball, ball. And I'm like... Damn, those balls are right down the middle. So if anybody knows what a ball looks like, even when it's a strike, it's Chipper. So I love that. Chipper used to have the smallest zone of the guys that I used to watch from center field. It was like, incredible. But I love listening to those guys on the call. But that was much needed, much warranted, especially right now. These guys are scuffling. You saw a lot of frustration right there. And when things are, go are not going your way, what they say, AJ, when it rains, it pours. And right now it feels like it's pouring on the Atlanta Braves. No, so it didn't motivate him that much. They still got swept by the Brewers. So I love Snit, and he had to stand up for his guy, but he got whooped yesterday. There it is, Dave O'Brien, 16-7. to They gave up so many home runs, they ran out of fireworks, as Rick Sutcliffe and Jake Peavy stole that story from Rick Sutcliffe, used to tell. But, yeah, they, I mean, they gave up so many fireworks and so many home runs, it was bad. Like Dave O'Brien said, the season's spiraling. They got too many injuries, and Snit was trying anything he can, man. They really – really are trying anything but they just they're short of weapons right now because the the starting rotations beat up to beat to death right the bullpen's banged up it's just the offense is banged up it just hasn't been a year for the braves and it just goes to show you one thing when they won 14 straight division titles how unbelievable that was because how and then how hard it is to do that because all it takes is one bad year like this where things don't go exactly right team being as good as the phillies and you have this year yeah. And we'll pitching talk more him. about – Yeah. oh, go ahead, Cam. No, I was going to say pitching kept him around. And AJ's right. Now that they've hit a wall, they've, it's been a struggle. I mean, last four start, last four games, I think, they haven't had a starter go over four, five innings. So that's tough. We'll talk more about the Braves with Grant McCauley. He's going to join us in about 40 minutes. Also, Hammer Territory is a show that does a lot of venting. They have usually about four Braves shows per week. If you want to check that out, I know we flashed the QR code for you. Very good podcast. They have a YouTube channel too. And let's get to our next candidate for this week's um show. The Baltimore Orioles and Toronto Blue Jays had some fun this week, but Wednesday is the scorecard that we want to point out for umpire Lanny, Larry Vanover. Now, Brown is the Baltimore Orioles play-by-play -play guy, and he's a pretty nice dude. He's the one who went viral last year because he got suspended for nothing, for being nice. I don't know. And this year he's a little spicier, and I like it. Colton Kowser was involved in a just brutal ump show plate appearance. And I think going to break was when he was like, Colton Kowser strikes out on a 5-0 count or however he phrased it. It was, it was just well done. But we're looking at the scorecard here. And AJ, I think the 76% called strike accuracy probably is not great. That's more single A status. Yeah, you know what? I like Larry. He's a good guy. He's a nice fellow. And you know what? As a catcher, I want all them pitches called strikes. I don't see what the problem was. Listen, I wanted that strike zone as big as I because I swung. So it didn't matter to me if it was like this far off the plate. And I was like, oh, like that pitch? That's I'm not bad. That. I'm letting that I'm letting that ball eat. That one? It's balls up. I'm letting it eat. Right? I'm not I'm not looking for a ball down the middle. Like that ball's close enough, Cam. Swing. I don't know. But have you know what I know it's I mean, impressive to me, especially retiring is 
And I watch these games, how good these guys are with with their strike zone awareness. Like these hitters, and like you said, I, just, I mean, all jokes aside, like those pitches aren't. We've seen worse, right? But the ability just, just to just know the strike zone like these dudes know is like it's so impressive to watch. You know, after you know post playing. Because those are balls, you know, and I just think at the end of the day, for me, I just think it's more about accountability. Hey, I missed the calls. You know, I was off. I had a rough night. Um, I don't know. It's just been a tough year on the umps. <laughs> it's been a real tough <laughs> year behind the plate, when behind it, the plate, in the field. It's been a tough year. But like like AJ said, you know, Larry is one of the guys that I got along with. Hey, I always enjoy talking to him. He's not a he's not a bad guy. He just had a bad night. Hey, listen, yeah. you know what it is? It's social media, though. It's social media. It's umpire auditor. Right, that's what's there. We never had that before. You're like, yeah, this guy had a bad night. Yeah, whatever. We'll move on tomorrow. Oh, well, I'm, Bob Davidson, I'm definitely missed twenty me. calls. Yeah, but nowadays you got you got all this stuff, and everyone knows umpires' names. Before nobody knew umpires' names. You knew like two <laughs> umpires, right? <laughs> now yeah, everybody knows every umpire's name. Before it was like, ah, who's behind the plate? Oh boy, okay. We got, we got Tim McClone. His stri- Tim McClone. His strike zone is this big. And if you don't throw it literally on the plate and this tall. You weren't going to get it. So you knew that going into it. And there was guys you could expand on. But now with the box, man, it just makes it tougher. And it's, is it better for the game? I think so. But has the strike zone gotten so small that now a pitcher's having a hard time? That's why you see velocity has to go up and stuff has to go up. Yeah, and it doesn't help when there's national television shows that have segments called Ump Show. What's that about? That's new. We didn't do that last year. <laughs> Bunch of I love it. I love it. Keep the players accountable. Keep everybody accountable on the field. That's what we do. We keep ourselves accountable too. We make fun of ourselves. Off the field. That too. Off the field, umps can do whatever they want. Have a great night. I'm talking about, have, have I'm time. Talking about front offices and stuff. Like what? You have an example I'm in just mind? Saying, like front offices? No, I'm not saying anyone in general. Oh, front you offices. Mean, oh, wait, you, you owners. Want go, you want to go back to? The well, whole yeah, deal. Exa- exactly. Yeah, I. I mean, there's certain owners that have like pretty small super yachts and it's embarrassing they need to get it together um <laughs> cam question for you about the zone before we step away from this what bothered you more uh vertical or horizontal when it was the way low, off? The, the low uh the low strike yeah the low strike low strikes the low the low strike got me all the time the 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 one up didn't bother me as much you know i came up around gary sheffield it's like you want to hunt the ball up anyway you're looking for the ball elevated those balls you got a chance to do more with uh, but it, it's the it's the pitches down that really really get me more than anything. And, I mean, down and off off the plate away too. Especially like lefties, they miss a lot of those arm side pitches to lefties that really 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 tick me off. So we, we this would be a long show if you start asking me what ticks me off about umpires. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> we might have to it's do more, a segment. It's, at it's more it's actually, it's actually more than but, just one thing. Sorry. <laughs> what really grinds was... grinds Cam's gears. To me, though, the thing about umpires that drove me crazy was depending on who I was facing, right? If I was facing a dude with a split and he could get the ball like a fastball call below the zone, then that opens me up to swinging at a split below the zone, right? Or like I, I, would tell, I told the story all the time. Like I used to, we used to face Bartolo Colon, and I'd go to the home plate umpire and I'd say, listen, he's going to throw the two-seamer that starts on my hip. That ball is not a strike. Please mm. try to watch it the whole way. And sometimes umpires would be good, and they'd listen and say, Oh, you're right, man. That ball's not a strike. I'm really watching it, and I'm. And then they get the umpires that would get all excited, and they'd still bring you up, and you look, you look at them, and they'd be like, "Yeah, sorry, I got excited." <laughs> so okay, but it just depended on who you were facing because certain pitches would lead to you swinging at other pitches. That's why guys get mad. Yeah, you know what? I remember a bat against Chris Archer. That's a great point, AJ. And I remember literally, I think it was Andy Fletcher, and I was going, "He's not trying to throw me a strike." Like, what are we doing? Like, you're helping this guy out. He's literally not trying to throw a strike, and you're helping him out. So, like you said, even knowing the guy on the mound as an umpire, like, hey, this is a guy who pounds the zone, Clayton Kershaw. Everybody knows Clayton Kershaw's in the zone. St. Louis Cardinals in the past, their MO was win win the race to two strikes. Like, knowing who was on the mound, too, goes a long way, too. That also upset me, too. Like, are are the umpires doing their homework about the guy that they're about to be calling balls and strikes for? So, you're absolutely right, AJ. That's a great point. I'll say the part that I've heard from managers and players that bothers them the most is the double inconsistency. And that's why the Orioles play stood out just now. So you're watching that first strike that's off the mark with wise, right, AJ? But then the next, Mm -hmm. you know, called strike that's off the mark is vertical. And they're like, dude, 
if if you're going to give them a little bit of this, right? Okay. It's mm-hmm. it's close. It's not like you shouldn't be freaking out, but then they're like now you're going above above my zone too. And yeah, they weren't crazy above the box, but I think when you feel like he's not getting it right either way, that's pretty frustrating. Well, that was the other thing we'd always argue about is you can't give them both sides. If you want to give yeah. a guy this far off the plate away, I can live with that. If you want to give him off the plate in, I'm not I hopefully not swinging at it, but at least I know that, but you can't give them because if you give them this much, which is like two inches on each side, the plate goes from 17 inches to 21 inches. And we all know that four and a half inches is huge, Scott, according to Todd Frazier. So let's make sure that, you know, if you give them two inches and two inches, that's four inches more that I have to cover. Now, if, I, if it's like, all right, he's giving them two inches off the plate away, I can I can dive out there and I can take care of that. But if it's giving them both in and out, or if it's in, I'm like, all right, I just can't hit that, so I'm going to play off it. But if I got to cover both, I'm in trouble. Like, if I got to cover high and low, I'm in trouble. Big shout out to America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, for helping us eat good during this busy time of the year for us. With HelloFresh, you get pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. It's home cooking made easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh makes it easy, even for picky eaters like Scott. There's a changing menu of 50 recipes to choose from each week. Customize it to fit your taste. There's protein and veggie swap options too. The recipes are easy to follow. Just choose your delivery day, open your box, cook, and eat. My house is busy with sports, but family dinners are important. My fam eats better, healthier, and we cook so much easier with HelloFresh. And for a limited time, kids eat free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash FTKids to unlock this exclusive offer. One free kids meal per box for two months while subscription is active. That's free kids meals just by going to HelloFresh.com slash FTKids. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy baseball the way it should be covered.